What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and I am back from my, I guess, two or three month hiatus from YouTube and Scrolls. Uh, came back just in time for the Echoes release, which is just around the corner. So, it was really my computer breaking combined with a lack of motivation to play Scrolls uh, was the root of my inactivity the past couple of months. Uh, but I do have new computer parts on the way. Uh, hopefully I'll have my new computer built. Uh, it's going to be a really nice computer, much better than the one I had before. And I'll be back to my old self with lots of videos. Uh, hopefully that will start in the next week or two. So this video you're watching right now might seem a little lesser in quality. Uh, because I am making it on a piece of crap laptop. Uh, so the audio might be a little fuzzy and the video might not be as high resolution. But I really just wanted to get some kind of video just to t let you everybody know that I am still alive. Uh, so today we are just going to hopefully play a couple matches with somebody on the test server here. Uh, because we want to test out these Echo Scrolls. Since I've been inactive I haven't had a lot of time to look at the new scrolls and test them around. Uh, currently, I'm testing and building an automaton deck. Uh, here is what I have right now. Been working pretty well. I certainly think automatons are going to be uh, big players uh, in the post Echoes meta. Uh, seem really strong. Maybe some of the scrolls will have to get nerfed. Some of them seem pretty strong. Uh, but yeah, so let's uh, play some matches. Here we are against our old friend the Overlord. Good luck, have fun. And we're gonna mulligan this hand because we have no one or two drops. Although, turn three play and a burn is really nice. I mean, not an ideal turn three play though. This is slightly worse, <laughs> but whatever. Get rid of one of those early thunder surges. All right, so the Overlord is going to be using a growth. And not used to seeing the Overlord with this avatar. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> when, uh, I think the Overlord usually, usually uses some kind of... Does he use this kind of helmet? I'm not sure. So he, this is one of the new growth creatures, Keen Warden. Pillage plus three attack until next attack. So it can do a lot of idle damage for a one drop pretty quickly or in the early game. Oh, I do, drop, I do draw two drops. That's nice. I'm going to... Sacrifice the cannon auto here. I want to keep that. I only have two thunder in the deck, and against growth, uh, I might want to keep hold of that. And I'm just gonna challenge this uh, Dean Warden right away because only has one attack right now. The Overlord would have to sink a, a scroll of an enchantment to be able to kill this. I'm also gonna be able to have armor right now. I'll get rid of the another cannon automaton here. Um, hopefully I draw a 4 drop next turn. Uh, let's move back. So I have armor here, so he needs some kind of enchantment to deal damage to you. Uh, well, he'll likely just move to the side just to get the pillage effect on her and get one out of damage in. Um, I'll likely just kill it with a gun on what's on that. So pretty good start for me. Uh, unfortunately for Dovalo, he did not have a turn 2 play as growth. Uh, now on turn 3... He plays a terrain brute. Okay, so I am just gonna be able to kill this. This just gets one idle damage in. Oh, what? There was an arrow. What happened? Is that a new thing? There was a. Did you see that? Do you see that arrow on the terrain brute? Is that something new with echoes? Alright, I'll get rid of the bombard here, and kill you. I will. Should I move up? I'll just stay put. I'll just gladly take the center of the board. Uh, so I did have a dead turn this turn, but next turn I'll be able to play the last automaton, which is one of the scrolls people think are really, really, really strong in uh, Echoes. Um, 3, 2, 4 isn't eye-popping for a 5 cost, but look at that, Armor 2. We know how good Armor 2 is on things like Gallant Defender and Winged Shield, but those are conditional. Imagine a creature with always Armor 2. Uh, and it has a pretty interesting ability, like Blast Strike. Alright, now we draw the 4 drop. Um... I will play the Blast Automaton right in front. I'm actually going to kind of run away here. 
He can chase me if he wants. I have armor, like this the guy in front, but I don't really need it. By me staying down here, like I'm kind of locking down these lanes, so he's going to have to build up up there, which is going to set up a really nice thunder surge for me. So I'm pretty happy that I kept uh, this thunder surge rather than keeping those, uh, whatever they're called, the big automatons. Cannons. He sacrifices for scrolls. So I'm going to set up 5 energy. He's at 4 growth. And see what he plays. Huh, I got the uh, Arcane Conduit Idols here. Last time I was uh, maybe on the test server, that was when I was, show I was showing the new idols. And I changed to these ones. So he plays a 4 drop there, and it looks like he might separate for a Thunder Surge, and he does not. So luckily for me, that sets up a really nice Thunder Surge room, because I'm going to be able to kill this with the Thunder Surge, and this Terrain Brute with the attack from that. And the Terrain Brute was about to attack. Unfortunately, we'll have to sacrifice our third Cannon Automaton. We'll be at six resources now, so now is where we would want to play all of them. But we can't pass up this value Thunder Surge. Uh, we are going to take a hit from this, well, in Ranger, but this, uh, this guy's so good. Armor 2, that means if he puts an Earthen Mirth on this, it's still not enough damage to destroy this Blast Automaton. He is a pain in the butt to kill for uh, for growth. Armor is strong. I mean, an Earthen Mirth, Kinfolk Brave can kill it. A couple two attack creatures and a Crimson Bowl can kill it. But all these scenarios have one side pouring in probably multiple scrolls to destroy this guy. So he might need a tone down on balance. I wouldn't mind if all these scrolls that people think might be OP just make it onto the live server. And we just see how they work. So yeah, there's the Earthen Mirth. Um, and, ooh, wind up Automaton. That would be good here because you can give this guy haste, basically. And I kind of need it. Because this Wetland Ranger is going to survive right now. So let's see what I can draw. A burn. Okay. So I will burn you. Um, all right, so Dover Lord's just gonna surrender here. See that he's lost the game, and we'll see if he wants to play another. All right, round two. He goes first this time. So last game, yeah, I got a pretty nice start compared to his start, and he really couldn't take down my armored units. We'll see if he's still playing growth. I can't really switch decks because this is the only deck I have on the test server right now. So this time the starting hand looks like it's going to be a mulligan. It's a little too slow. He is playing growth again. Uh, do a burn though. I still will throw a new starting hand. Early start, early uh, drops are important versus growth and this is decent. Um, I will get rid of one of these early cannon automatons. So you might be surprised seeing Potency Burst here. A lot, not a lot of people are uh, all on board with this card yet. I think it's going to be pretty good. Because although uh, it would be a 3 cost spark, so it's a little worse there. At 6 energy, it would be like only 5 damage instead of Violent Dispersal's 8 damage. Uh, but just having 3 things that has so much versatility. Like, I have no Violent Dispersal's in this deck right now. Um, what the heck does this thing do? I heard people talking about this like it's really good. Creature comes by next to it. Uh, okay, so things are going to be coming out fast. Let's uh, get down a gun auto now. Maybe I should have kept the bombard because I could use it to destroy this overgrown man here. Men her, yeah. Actually, well, I can just use the potency burst next time. Yep. Okay. So I have no other play. So, oh, what should I stack? I guess I'll stack the Echomus on then. Growth doesn't play that many spells, so I will just go ahead and destroy that. See, I can just get rid of that with a potency burst, and he does not get to have any fun with it. Uh, do I try to engage him? No, BC might have a Rat King, he can kill that, and also, uh, I would be dealing 2 damage to it this turn, which means the burn would not draw a scroll. Or I could wait, but then next turn I'm going to want to play next Scottish Dater. So hopefully he plays something with 3 health here. Please, something with three health. Please, 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 please. Otherwise, I should have sacrificed the burn uh, before and played that comes on. But you gotta keep the burn. Okay, so he's gonna move up, so I might be able to just 
do stuff anyways. Okay, he does not play something I can kill right now. That sucks. Double burn, even though I can't use it. That is tough. That is tough. Uh, You know, I'm tempted to keep these burns around. I am really tempted to. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this. I think it might be a little too slow versus growth. I'm going to damage to you, so... I'm just going to do damage to you. I could burn you now, but I'm just going to wait until I get the card draw next turn. So you're probably going to die to this tearing brute. So this time, this start of the game... Definitely uh, not as great as our last start. Well, it would have been great if you played something we could burn. But you can't really expect growth to play things you can burn uh, on turn 4 and up. It was really that tearing root in round 3 if it was something else that would have been good. So now what is he going to play? Hopefully he doesn't play another threat. Another 4 drop would be tough. And there is another 4 drop. Okay, so we're just going to burn this now. Slowly get ahead of him in uh, scrolls and all that stuff. Canister Automaton. Man, these are some tough sacrifices now. Uh, let's get rid of this. Whatever this does. The Scout Forge thing. Okay, so now play something we can burn. Pretty pleased. Come on, hopefully you ran out of four drops. Canister Automaton is... Uh, Pretty cool. Right there. There's something you can burn. Spotted links. This seems like a really good scroll. Oh, two spotted links. This seems like a really good scroll. Uh, so let's let's burn this and a wind up automaton. I can't get it to attack this turn. Canister auto. Sacrifice the replic on. What do I play here? I kind of want to save the wind-up auto for haste, but it's only going to do one attack for haste, so I don't really need it for haste. I will play the canister auto just because if there's a veteran, at least he will destroy the, the veteran. Playing it all the way down at the bottom because... Tearing Brute. Maybe I should play at the top just to uh, let something destroy it, but then you could just like hit it with the Welland Ranger and finish it off with a Ragged Wolf and it'll lose, lose a Ragged Wolf. That's why I didn't want to do that. So I'm in a bit of a tough situation here because he uh, might have a Spotted Lynx that's attacking every single turn and this guy attacks every single turn. So I'll hopefully I'll get another one of those Potency Bursts. Uh, I already used a couple of burns. Cannonautobson's armor will be nice. Okay, there's a Brother of the Wolf. And at least this attacks this turn, which means it's probably not going to, going to attack next turn. And he is up there, so I have a chance to kind of just, like, move up a little bit. And I'm going to go to... Should I go to 7 Energy, play the Cannon, and the Copper? I am tempted to. Now, but then I'll be, like, top-decking so much. I'd rather just sacrifice the Cannon for Scrolls. I really want to play this Copper this turn. Um, so I'm going to sacrifice the Cannon for, for Scrolls, and I'll be able to play this wind up bottom on uh not a great I mean thunders are nice in this point of the game but I think I wanted all this stuff I can still get you to deal one damage though so I'm going to actually put you behind the wind up automaton might be a and should I have you deal one damage does that really do anything uh, one damage doesn't really do anything does it yeah it doesn't I'd rather just be able to deal two damage next turn if I decide to do that would have been good if I had top deck like a 3 drop or a 2 drop here as well as so I can play that as well as the wind up and the copper so hopefully it doesn't have a veteran to destroy this wind up automaton
Hopefully he bunches up again, so uh, like last game, so I can get a big thunder surge off. And looks like there is gonna be a veteran. Yep, veteran. Okay. So destroys an idol. It's not middle idol though. And I don't have to use this thunder surge yet. So, I won't. I will just burn you. Ooh, copper arm, it's on. Get rid of the Thunder Surge. Now here's, this is where the decisions get tough. If I don't play anything, this spotted Lynx does not attack. Actually, I don't really mind because I'll put this in the middle. So that will protect middle idol. And... I will put this wind up automaton in the middle. I don't want to put the copper auto down because he can kind of just run away to the top and the bottom. And this uh, this guy's getting close to attacking. Still a thunder surge coming up soon. Well, luckily, I have to use that to get rid of the spotted links. Spotted links might be better than kinfolk brave. Just saying a lot. A lot of people complain about Kinfolk Brave. So, growth looks like it will still be strong, as it really always has been. Okay, so he is probably going to take 3 damage with this Terrain Brute. Spotted Lynx and a Keen Warden. So, I can Thunder Surge there. And that will be a cleared row. Uh, potency burst is also nice. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, do I go to seven just so I can play a copper with it to protect him? Maybe. Uh, actually, I am going to do that actually to to protect this idol I'll move you down then whoops because that will also cover me for a for a uh, whatever it's called for a kinfolk veteran because the other guy would kill the other guy kill the veteran that killed his friend but just in case he had like a ragged wolf uh, ragged wolf Earth and Earth would have been game, he would have won. So I wanted to protect this 5 health idol. But now these two guys are delegated to the top of the board, so they're little threats. I have a potency burst to really take down anything. So potency burst with a lot of resources, it is basically a battle special. That's why I really love potency burst uh, versatility. Okay, so... We haven't gotten to use uh, Wind Up Ottomans on this attack yet. I'm at 7 energy now, so I'm liking that. Okay, he did have a Kinfolk veteran, so he's going to be able to take out that. He's going to take out Top Idol. Now I have a choice, so I want to take out the Lynx or this thing. Potency Burst. I think I'd rather have a Forge. What is this, Creature or Unit? Creature, so I can play the Forge. Um, I'm going to get rid of the potency burst in this case uh, I will destroy destroy you play the forge in front of the five health enemies again I'm still afraid a little bit although now the forge is in an odd position and I'll pump once because I don't want to play a creature if I had a scout automaton, that'd be good because then this wind-up automaton can get uh, an attack with a attack of two hasted, so I can kill that spotted lynx. Sacrificing that potency burst was tough, but I wouldn't have anything to protect from a veteran. You already played two veterans though, so we can't really expect a third just yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is actually kind of bad. 
There's two... That's spotted lynx, man. And I don't have any more burns, and I, like, used all my thunder surges, too. And my, I don't really have anything to kill that. Keeper's Pledge. What does this do? Creature comes to play. Other creatures on that side get plus one attack until end of turn. Okay. That might actually help me a little bit this coming turn with the wind-up automaton. Okay, good. He does not protect that. I did not want him to protect that because I have to kill that thing. Oh, and a scout. So this costs four energy to have haste, so I can play that with seven, yeah. That works. So, ooh, I can do, I can't do that. This, pay the two. And then you're actually gonna have three attack, but I'll still, uh, I'll still do that. And I will protect you with armored unit, even though an earth and earth would kind of suck. So you get three attack because uh, the scout brings it up to, uh, brings it up one, and then this keeper's pledge brings it up another. Okay, so that was a pretty big turn for me. And that forge is set to uh, spawn another unit next turn. With seven energy now, I'll usually have enough energy to get this wind-up guy to attack. So that's good. And he can attack for, I guess, two every turn because of the scout. Or, I have another scout in my hand. Overgrown men. So that means if you put down one content creature next to it, they're going to have haste. So double brave here would be kind of devastating. Are right, those two cards in his hand? Oh, Rat King. That is scary. Oh, that was good. That was a cool play because he gets the four attack on that. Oh no, what if I lose this? I think I might lose this. That's why this only has two health. Because it's really pretty strong. Uh, Blast Automaton. We need this. This is something that we need. Uh... I think I'll, I want to keep the Bombard. Then, yeah, I'll keep the Bombard. I think I'm going to have you attack and then just play the, the Blast Automaton. Uh, so, do I destroy the Overgrown Menher or do I destroy a rat? He only has one scroll in hand. Let's destroy the overgrown thing. So you have three attack. I'll just destroy that. And hopefully that automaton doesn't spawn spawn up there. Okay, bottom's fine. So next turn I can go with a bombard with another blast automaton. And that is a lot of blast strike, so that double blast strike might be able to destroy some rats. So, he has a lot of attacking creatures this turn. Let's hope he doesn't have a, like a double Crimson Bowl or something. That would hurt quite a bit. Even a single, single Crimson Bowl would hurt. Oh, but he has that thing. Oh, boy. No Crimson Bowl, please. Forgot about this. The uh, Keeper's Pledge. If he doesn't destroy me this turn, though, I'll have a pretty darn good turn next turn. Okay, that hurts because I'm losing this guy and that guy. But... I'm still alive, I think. With a Blast Auto here, they'll both have four attack. And I can destroy some things, maybe? Let's just do it. Let's do the Blast Auto Bombard. So how do I do this? Um, so I have to... I guess I'll do it like that. That kind of weakened his side. Luckily that Keeper's Pledge is going away. 
My stone enigmas came just a little too early for that keeper's pledge. I have eight energy now. Um, and I do have these nice big armored guys. We both are almost top decking every turn. I don't think I have any burns left. I don't think I have any thunder surges left. And I might not have any potency burst left either. So I might not have any removal. I kind of just have to block these idols. And um, slowly win because I have more resources than him. I have to watch out though. Uh oh, another one of those things. Oh, that's kind of cool. So he's just putting that down just to get a nice big attack buff for his entire side next turn. That, that has some really interesting plays. I like that. Okay. So now, how do I do this? Let's see. Another blast auto. I'm going to want that, I think. Now, do I power trip... Yeah, because I want to see what else I can draw. Potency Burst. That was good, I think. I can destroy this guy. Okay, so, I have to protect these idols, right? Let's see. Let's put the new guy that's not attacking up here. Then let's Potency Burst this. Uh. And now... Do I protect this idol? I mean, you could play a creature in Earth and Mirth and destroy this idol, so I, I kind of want to protect it. Chances are, he's going to be able to kill this guy instead. So I will protect it with this guy. Okay, I have the three blast autos protecting. Quite the uh, defense there. So I guess I did have another potency burst. Yeah, see how versus how potency versus. I really like it. Um. It Ron's supposed to cost six. When you play that, when you have, when you have six energy left, it's going to deal five magic damage. And most things you're going to mount this person have five health or less. Witch doctors have five health. Uh, Great walls have five health. Like only really like the champions have more health. Okay, so he's going to be able to kill one of these blast autos at least. Maybe two. Maybe this guy and this guy. I'm pretty sure one of them one of them will survive at least. Depends what his other two scrolls in hand are. Unfortunately, the deck's not cycling for a bit, so oh, he did have that. Oh, that's gonna be game. GGWP. So an Earthenmirth did actually win the game, so I didn't really have to focus too much on the bottom and because he had an, an Earthenmirth would have won on the middle anyways. So well played to Doverlord. So we see automatons can be beaten, not an unstoppable deck, but still a lot of fun to play. So I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, the production value of this uh, video might not be too high. I'm not going to have like the cool outro or anything. I'm making this on a pretty corrupt computer. I'm not sure if I'll post that many times uh, more before I have my new computer built and um, I have a ton of videos. Uh, so stay tuned. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, to stay updated at Nerp the Ninja, and also try streaming soon as well on twitch.tv slash Nerp the Ninja. So subscribe if you uh, want more content, like the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Keep on scrolling, scrollgers.